get that get that underway. All right, wonderful. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to this community open house for the City of Guelph's water supply master plan update. Thank you so much for taking the time to participate this evening. Uh, this is an opportunity to provide you with an update on the project progress and answer your questions. My name is Alicia Evans. I'm a facilitator with AECOM and I will be your host for this evening. To begin, I will pass it over to Dave Belanger to provide the territorial acknowledgement and a brief welcome from the City of Guelph. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the City of Guelph Water Supply Master Plan Open House. Uh, my name is Dave Belanger. I am the Water Supply Program Manager for Guelph Water Services, and I'm the Project Manager for Guelph's Water Supply Master Plan. Uh, this is our second open house for this project. Uh, the first meeting was way back in February of 2020, um, in those uh, pre-pandemic days. Seems like a long time ago. Um, the pandemic certainly slowed us down in this project and complicated some of our engagement processes, but we still managed to get the work done and we welcome this opportunity to get our information out to you and to get comments and input back. Um, second factor in, in, in this long delay was some changes to our population growth projections. Uh, some of you may know that the Provincial Places to Grow Plan for Ontario increase the population projections from 2041 to 2051. Um, this came in the middle of our project and this affected Guelph and the communities around Guelph. Um, so we now have higher population and employment numbers than we had when we started the project. Uh, Matt will explain some of the new numbers and the details, uh, but this caused us to take a step back. We had to redo some work and we had to consider the implications of more growth and the sustainability of our water supplies to meet these higher population numbers. Uh, we've completed this work. We're back on track and we'll present some of that, some of these results today. Um, in the first open house for the project, we introduced the project, provided some details on the tasks in the project. We outlined how we would use the population projections to estimate how much water we would need in the future and how we would compare for that to the amount of water we have now. The difference between what we have now and how much we need in the future is what the water supply master plan is intended to do. It's to find more water sources to meet our needs in the future. We've identified a number of water supply alternatives. Uh, top of the list is water conservation and efficiency. And these form part of the plan that we will present to you tonight. Um, I also want to provide the territorial acknowledgement for Guelph prior to starting the, the open house. As we gather, we are reminded that Guelph is situated on treaty lands that is steeped in rich indigenous history and home to many First Nations, Inuit and Métis people today. As a city, we have a responsibility for the stewardship of the land on which we live and work. Today, we acknowledge the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations as the Ashinaabe peoples on whose traditional ter territory Guelph is located. Um, I also wanted to take this opportunity to remind everyone that tomorrow, September 30th, is National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. It's an opportunity for us to commemorate the history and tragic legacy of residential schools in Canada. In Guelph, there will be several learning and community events put on by the Guelph Museum and the Rotary Club. It's also Orange Shirt Day to honor the experiences of Indigenous people and to recognize their resilience and to affirm our commitment that every child matters. I hope you can participate in your own way tomorrow. With that, I'll turn it back to Mash, Matt and Alicia to get, the projects, uh, to get the meeting started. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Um, now, Matt, okay, thank you. So I'd like to run through a few housekeeping items before we review the agenda. So we are using Microsoft Teams tonight. Uh, the Teams feature that you may, Teams features that you may want to use include uh, the camera and the microphone, the raise hand and the chat, which is shown as the speech bubble. Um, now you can access these features on all of the devices. So if you are using a computer, just access the features by um, hovering the mouse over the screen. If you are using a phone or tablet, you might need to tap on the screen to, um, to find these, and you might need to click on the three dots 
Um, also, one thing, if you are using a phone or a tablet, you can change the orientation of the, the screen and zoom in as needed to see some of the slides. Now, during the presentation, I'll ask you to please uh, stay on mute until we get to the question and answer period. Once we get to the Q&A period, um, please use the raise hand feature to speak. Now, we know that technology uh, can be a challenge at times, so we appreciate your patience with us if anything happens. Um, and if you are having any issues yourself, uh, please also free, feel free to use the Q&A box to ask for help. Tracy will be monitoring this throughout and we'll do our best to help you out. Uh, finally, this webinar is being recorded. Following the meeting, the recording and a feedback survey form will be posted on the Water Supply Master Plan uh, page on haveyoursay.wealth.ca. You can also reach out by phone or email after the presentation to ask your questions. And uh, we will provide you with all of this information again at the end of the session. Next slide, please. Now, tonight's agenda will unfold in two parts. So during the first part of this evening, we will hear from the project team through a presentation. And following the presentation, we will then address your questions and um, hear your comments. Please feel free to ask questions throughout the meeting through the chat box but we will hold off on responding to, to them until after the presentation. And this meeting is scheduled to go until 8.30. So uh, I will now turn it over to Matt Alexander from ACOM to introduce uh, the project team. Thanks very much, Alicia. Um, so uh, Dave has introduced himself. I, I won't ask him to do that again, but uh, um, I will introduce myself. Uh, so Matthew Alexander, I'm the project manager uh, for the Water Supply Master Plan update for ACOM. And also with us tonight is Bill Golly. He's uh, the Water Conservation and Efficiency Lead uh, with Golly Associates Limited. And uh, Bill will be talking uh, briefly about the water conservation and efficiency component of the project tonight and also be available for any, any questions on those uh, topics that, that you have. So I think with that, we can uh, move on to the uh, introduction of the presentation. And, and so uh, the reason that we've, we've gathered here tonight, as we've heard from, from Dave and Alicia, is that the city is updating the 2014 Water Supply Master Plan. And this is the city's long-term plan for ensuring that we sustain our drinking water sources and services as our community grows. So the water supply master plan update includes reviewing our current water supply sources and identifying priorities for a sustainable municipal water supply from now until 2051. So as, as Dave mentioned uh, at the outset of the project, uh, we had our sites on 2041 and that was revised uh, when the, the province released uh, revised growth targets to the year 2051. We, uh, we circled back at that point and uh, reset to uh, 2051. Um, this is the, the second uh, open house to provide you with an opportunity to formally participate in the master plan process. So the purpose of the open house, so the purpose uh, is to learn about and share your thoughts on the potential alternative water supply sources that have been identified for the city, the detailed evaluation of these alternatives that we've done, and also the preferred solutions that have been identified. So at the outset of the project, a challenge and opportunity statement was developed that defines the purpose and objectives of the master plan. This statement is as follows. The city of Guelph is committed to managing population growth as it continues to develop strategies for ensuring adequate water supply. The goal is to develop a reliable and sustainable supply of water to meet the current and future needs of all residential, industrial, commercial, and institutional customers. That's continued on this slide. The 2014 Water Supply Master Plan confirmed that the existing water supply capacity will not meet future demands and set out a strategy for meeting future demands to 2038. It is therefore prudent to undertake an update to the water demand forecast, the existing water system capacity, and the status of ongoing projects. The proposed implementation strategy strategy must deliver through to 2051 an adequate amount of water in a safe and cost effective manner and ensure that environmental sustainability is not compromised.
Okay, so this slide provides a, a simple representation of the municipal class environmental assessment process. So during phase one of the project, the challenges and opportunities were defined, and we met with the public to provide an introduction to the project. Since that time, we've progressed to, to phase two. And on the next slide, I'll discuss the major technical tasks that have been completed. So these tasks include uh, task one, um, which is the use of the 2051 provincial growth targets to develop water demand projections for all water supply customers in the city. So as I mentioned, that includes residential, institutional, commercial, and industrial uh, customers in the city. Task two, we evaluated the existing city water supply uh, to determine the maximum amount of water that could that could be produced uh, with the with the current system. This result was compared to the 2051 water demand projection to determine how much more water is needed. Then for tax, task three, a list of water supply alternatives that could provide the additional water was developed and an assessment was conducted to evaluate these alternatives. Finally, task four is the update of the master plan document, including the implementation plan. And this task is ongoing. So, um, Above the task list here, we've noted that ongoing uh, public consultation uh, went throughout these these four tasks, <clears throat> or as I should say, the three tasks. Um, and and the consultation that was completed is is summarized on, on the next slide. I'll go through that now. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, this is the the second open house, and and we uh, we had the first open house in February 2020, uh, just prior to the pandemic. So we were able to to meet in person for that one. Um, next, uh, the, the city has had uh, project overview meetings with the uh, Six Nations community, and they have a similar meeting plan with the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation in uh, October, so next month. Project information and updates were provided to these communities, as well as to the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, Confederacy of Chiefs. Um, next, we hosted two agency and municipality workshops and three community liaison group meetings and presented uh, at two meetings of the Water Conservation and Efficiency Public Advisory Committee. Uh, finally, a project overview was provided to the Guelph Wellington Development Association and Guelph and District Home Builders Association and an, and an information board was presented at an Our Community, Our Water open house. Um, this this open house uh, was a public meeting to discuss the Dolan Quarry revitalization project, which some of you may be aware of. Um, this slide summarizes some of the key themes for, uh, in the feedback that has been received from the from the public. So I'll just I'll read through this. Um, we heard that uh, prioritizing conservation was important. So that's that's um, similar to the 2014. Uh, master plan where, where conservation and efficiency strategies were were, um, uh, were a high priority. We heard the importance of protecting the natural environment, managing growth and development in a sustainable manner, controlling groundwater impacts from large groundwater users, monitoring emerging contaminants, limiting impacts to aquatic and terrestrial wildlife. So again, the importance of, of uh, monitoring the natural environment. Uh, prioritizing supply within the city before sources uh, outside of the city, so within the townships and county that surrounds the city. Uh, consideration of potential climate change impacts on water supply and valuing the agency of water. <clears throat> Excuse me. There we go. Okay, so Guelph water supply. Um, so I'll talk here uh, about Guelph's current uh, supply system, uh, which has been groundwater based since 1879. This system includes 25 production wells, primarily installed in the Guelph Gasport Bedrock Aquifer. Four, well, four wells are currently offline, and we'll discuss these under the water supply alternative section later in the presentation. Um, an important site in the city's water supply network is called the Arkell Spring Grounds. 
And I'll point it out here. I apologize. The font on this uh, map is, is somewhat small, but um, the Arkell Spring Grounds is located uh, here, where I'm indicating, uh, outside of the city on the east side of the boundary. Uh, this site includes six water supply wells and two groundwater collectors, one of which is offline and will be discussed later in the presentation. These uh, collectors are, are composed of a series of perforated pipes and manholes that collect shallow groundwater. A unique aspect of the collector system is the use of water pumped from the Hermosa River, which runs through the site. So the Hermosa River is located next to the site. And the water that's pumped from the river is used to recharge or add water to the groundwater system. So our review of the existing uh, system determined that um, there's about 79,000 cubic meters per day that's currently available from the full system. So with that water volume in mind, 79,000, we then evaluated how much water will be needed in 2051 when the target resi uh, total residential and employment population uh, is 319,000 people. So that's 203,000 residential population and 116,000 employment population. There were um, three numbers to consider uh, for the future water supply demand projections. First is the average day demand or the total volume of water consumed in a year divided by 365 days. And our assessment estimated this uh, average day demand to be 68,300 cubic meters per day in 2051. Next is the maximum day demand, which is the volume of water consumed on the highest water use day of the year. And we estimated this as approximately 1.3 times the average day demand. So this works out to about one, uh, 91,500 cubic meters per day for the maximum day demand in 2051. So the third number uh, in terms of future water supply requirement uh, is system redundancy. Uh, or, or another term for this is security of supply. And this is the amount of system capacity set aside as contingency to address uncertainty in the planning process to accommodate regular facility maintenance and to safeguard against unplanned events. So we went through a process of, of looking at uh, the different risks to the system. And we estimate that the city should be able to produce 15% um, more water than the maximum volume uh, required. So that for, as an example, if, if a drought were to occur, there's enough water available for their, their customers. So what this means is, is the, the total amount of water that the system should be able to produce is 15% more than the maximum day demand. So this graph shows the, the water projections from this previous slide uh, between 2020, uh, 2021 and 2051. So the, the blue line is the average day demand. The green line is the maximum day demand. And the orange line is the maximum day demand plus 15%. So this is our security of supply value. The dashed uh, black line shows the amount of water that's available today. So it's that approximately 79,000 cubic meters per day that we determined. And if we compare this value to the total capacity required in 2051, we, we note that um, it's estimated uh, about 26,000 cubic meters per day of additional supply will be required. So next question is, where will the water come from to address this deficit? So there were four categories of water supply alternatives that were considered in the technical assess assessment and evaluation. First is demand management, um, efficiency, and water reuse programs. This alternative does not provide water to the system, but would reduce the amount of water needed each day. This alternative was a priority, as I mentioned, in the 2014 master plan, and the city has had a lot of success reducing demands through conservation and efficiency uh, in the past. So the next category is groundwater sources in and outside of the city. 
And within this category, there are several options that include um, improve and optimize the existing system, uh, existing well supply system, restore offline sources with treatment, identify new potential groundwater supply areas, including the Dolan quarry, and install uh, aquifer storage and recovery wells. So I'll go through each of these, um, each of these alternatives in the coming slides. So the third category uh, is uh, local surface water sources. So the, uh, so the surface water supply alternatives that were considered um, include uh, the Gulf, Gulf Lake and Aramosa River, and the, uh, the Gulf Lake option was reviewed in detail. The last alternative is do nothing. And obviously this would not increase the water supply and it would result in uh, limited growth within the city. So one final note uh, about um, uh, on this on this slide, sorry, is uh, the water supply master plan study area. And and this defines the area within uh, which we considered uh, the range of alternatives. So the 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 three um, alternatives on these last two slides. And so new new water supply sources were limited to an approximately five kilometer area around the city to align with the desire to maintain local sustainability. So primarily there's a focus within the city and then beyond that, um, the, the uh, desire is to, to remain within five kilometers of the boundary. So next we have a few slides about um, the technical assessment of alternatives that was completed, starting with water conservation uh, and efficiency. And for this, I'll ask uh, Bill Golly to walk us through this first slide. Thanks, Matt. Um, yeah, my name is Bill Golly. I'm a professional engineer and I've uh, specialized in water efficiency in Canada and the US for the last 25 years or more. And uh, I'm gonna talk about this slide. So as part of this master plan update, we developed four water demand scenarios and they're listed on the, the slide you can see. But to be conservative, scenario number one is based on the city stopping all of its water conservation programming except for the mandatory programs such as the Ontario Low Water Response Program, but stopping all their voluntary programs for water efficiency. And it's also based on per capita demands for both residential and uh, non-residential customers remaining at their average 2015 to 2019 rates until at least 2051. So scenario number one is a basically a do nothing scenario and uh, it's the baseline to which the other three scenarios are going to be compared. Now since the city is not implementing any water efficiency programs under scenario number one there are no costs associated with scenario number one. Scenario number two is based on the city continuing its current level of water conservation programming. So that doesn't mean necessarily continuing with the same programs but it does mean continuing with the same level of effort regarding the budgets for water efficiency and the staffing levels. So the, the programs themselves will evolve over time, but the city will continue to uh, try to reduce water demands just as they've been doing over the last many, many years. The savings projected in scenario number two were calculated based on extending the water demand trends observed between 2015 and 19 until 2051. So scenario two projects an overall reduction of 4,400 cubic meters a day by 2051, where a 6.5 reduction versus scenario one demands with a cost of about $2,600 per cubic meter per day savings. Scenario number three is based on the city focusing its efforts only on high use and inefficient customers. Uh, as, as more customers become efficient, there's less room to achieve savings. So scenario number three is the city just focusing on the customers where savings opportunities exist. So by focusing on fewer customers than in scenario number two, the city can lower its program costs, but it will also lower its total water savings than in scenario number two. Scenario number three projects an overall reduction of about 2,200 cubic meters a day by 2051, or a 3.25% reduction versus scenario number one, 
with a, a slightly lower cost of about $2,100 per cubic meter per day savings. Scenario number four is the most aggressive scenario, but it also has the highest savings. And of course, it also has the highest costs. It is based on the city continuing its current level of water conservation programming, which is basically scenario number two, but also we're going to add implementing water reuse programming. Now, while water reuse programs are not currently widely implemented in North America, there are, there are programs, but they're, they're not widely implemented. Improvements in technologies, a decrease in the costs associated with water reuse, an increase in customer acceptance, and or a severe shortage of fresh water supply could all significantly increase the potential water savings related to water reuse. But we're being conservative here. And scenario number four projects an overall reduction of about 4,900 cubic meters a day by 2051, or a 7.3% reduction versus scenario one, with a cost of about $3,000 per cubic meter per day of savings. And now I'll pass it back to Matt. Thanks very much, Bill. So I'll move from there onto the groundwater, groundwater alternatives. <clears throat> And under the groundwater alternatives, there were five categories of groundwater sources evaluated. The first are the existing offline sources, and these are shown in the map here in red. Uh, these include three water supply wells that require water quality treatment to return to service, and one groundwater collector system on the Arkell Spring ground site that must be reconstructed. The next category are six existing test wells shown in green on the map. And they're located both within the city and on city owned land uh, to the east of the city. The next category is quarry pond level management, which is specifically related to the Dolan quarry. That's located here on the map. Um, on this site, the, the rock at the bottom of the quarry is within the bedrock aquifer that supplies water to the city wells. The exposure of the aquifer here poses a risk to the water supply, and a source water protection strategy is required to address this. The city has identified a potential strategy that includes uh, annex annexation of the property into the city, and beyond addressing the water supply risk, management of the quarry water also provides a water supply opportunity that could increase the city's water supply capacity. Uh, the next alternative below this, we have uh, aquifer storage and recovery, which is an opportunistic strategy of capturing excess water when it's, when it's not needed, treating it to potable standards, injecting it into a deep aquifer, and pumping it out when it's needed. In this case, the Arkel collectors would be the source of the water. So finally, we have new wells outside of the city and the potential locations for these are shown in the map in purple. So we have one here in the southeast and one in the north. Uh, at, this, at this stage, these are hypothetical locations that are selected based on unlimited field information and some groundwater flow modeling work that we completed. So it's, there are not, are not specific wells there at this stage. So all of the potential sources within these ca five categories were evaluated using a groundwater flow model that assessed the amount of water available and the potential environmental impacts associated with each source. Uh, next are the surface water uh, alternatives. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, and this alternative considered two water taking scenarios for Guelph Lake. The first includes construction of a water treatment plant to treat and distribute water to the city. The second considers capturing additional water uh, when la lake levels are high in the fall, winter, and spring seasons. Uh, similar to the Arkel collector alternative, this excess water we would be treated and stored underground and removed when needed. The surface water alternatives were evaluated using uh, a, a modeling assessment that was completed by the Grand River Conserva Conservation Authority, and they used uh, data, flow data from uh, Guelph Lake and the Speed River 
um, from the period 1951 to 2019. The model considers the amount of water available from the lake while maintaining downstream water levels where required to support uh, the wastewater treatment plant discharge and the ecosystem in general. So once established, these alternatives were evaluated using the categories and criteria that are listed here and on the next few slides. And this includes the First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples category. And the criteria here is effect on indigenous values, cultural and traditional use. Under built environment, the criteria are the potential effect on existing and planned structures and pot potential effects on private and municipal wells. Under natural environment, we considered potential effects to the natural environment, uh, to water resources, and impacts to natural heritage features. Also, we considered environmental management planning considerations. Under social and cultural environment, uh, we looked at land use impacts, short-term construction impacts, potential impacts from operations, cultural, heritage, and archaeological impacts, ability to meet growth targets and public acceptance. Under the economic and financial considerations category, the criteria were estimated capital costs, estimated operations and maintenance costs, and energy, uh, including energy consumption. Under legal and jurisdictional considerations, uh, we considered the look, uh, location of facilities relative to the city boundaries, land requirements, and implementation of source protection policies. Under technological considerations, we considered the ability to implement and meet max demand, the constructability of the alternative, water treatment requirements, including current and future, the expandability of the facility, the ability to respond to changes in regulations, the ability to utilize existing infrastructure and approval requirements. So the next series uh, of slides provide the results of the evaluation. So we've here we've we've simplified the long form of these tables to include the key information that was used to identify the preliminary preferred solution. And one note about the solution is that um, unlike some environmental assessments, we don't end up with with one solution that addresses the challenge and opportunity statement. Rather, the solution is a combination of alternatives. And I'll discuss the reasons for that in, in a few slides. So for the uh, conservation and efficiency alternative, um, first looking at scenario one, which is, as Bill mentioned, was our, our baseline. So this was um, uh, ceasing current programmings, uh, programs. And um, the key evaluation considerations for this scenario was that this would not achieve demand reduction, so it would be um, the, the water demands would be the same as what we've projected uh, to 2051. Uh, we inferred that this would have a low public, public acceptance, and this is based on the, the strong support for conservation and efficiency in, in future uh, previous master plans uh, and public engagement that was conducted for, for this master plan update. And so the outcome here is, is that this is, this is not preferred. Uh, scenario two is the current level of effort and this would achieve a moderate demand reduction. We infer that it would have high public acceptance as this would continue the current level of, of programming, which, uh, which is supported. Um, there there uh, may be minor changes to existing and, and planned buildings, and the extent of this would depend on the specific programs that, that, that are implemented. There's low to moderate costs for this uh, alternative relative to other supply alternatives. Under scenario three, uh, this has the, the least demand reduction. Uh, we, we do infer that it would have a high public acceptance as we are still achieving demand reduction despite uh, the residents already being very efficient water users. So as, as, as Bill mentioned, um, this, this scenario uh, is a focus on higher demand uh, customers after um, we, we see decline in overall um, uh, de de overall demand on, on, on average. So the city is becoming more uh, efficient. And so we're, we're gonna switch to focus on high demand customers. Um, 
similar to scenario two, uh, we have uh, we anticipate minor changes to existing and planned buildings, again, subject to which programs are implemented. And this would have low cost relative to other supply alternatives. For scenario four, which would be the current level of effort with uh, water reuse programming added to this, uh, it would achieve the most demand reduction. Um, but we do note that it that we have an inferred moderate public acceptance here. And uh, the reason for that is because um, this, this scenario would involve the reuse of, of treated wastewater or stormwater. And, and we anticipate that some members of the public may not initially be comfortable with this. So an education camp campaign would, would be required um, to, to back this strategy up. So to educate the public in terms of what, would, uh, what the water reuse would be, would be used for and, uh, and all the, the technical aspects surrounding that. Um, under infrastructure, we note again, uh, minor changes to existing and planned buildings, but then we, we anticipate there would be moderate impact to the wastewater treatment plant infrastructure. And this is related to potential distribution of water from the wastewater treatment plant for reuse. <clears throat> uh, we also note here that reuse options can re require regulatory approvals. So that would be a hurdle to to get past. Uh, and under costs, uh, the cost would be mo moderate to high relative to other supply alternatives. So the outcome for scenarios two, three, and four is that they would all, uh, we're recommending that they all form part of the preferred solution. And so the, the current level of, uh, of effort, uh, so scenario two would be preferred, uh, would be implemented over the short term. And then as the city becomes more efficient, there'd be a shift uh, to high demand customers in the midterm. And finally, the implementation of water use would be on the, in the long term as the city pursues more expensive water supply projects, which makes uh, reuse more economical. So this graph shows the projected demands with water, water conservation and efficiency. And we can see uh, the demand reductions associated with the various scenarios. So we have Scenario two in yellow, uh, the baseline number one in blue. So this is uh, equal to the 2051 projections. Uh, two achieves the second most reduction. Uh, three is in green. And then four with water reuse is the highest reduction in red. Okay, so next, uh, this, this uh, shows the detailed alternative evaluation for offline municipal sources. So this is uh, the category where we have three municipal, three municipal wells and one uh, groundwater collector. So the noted evaluation criteria here is there, there's a high certainty of available water. And this is based on having available data from past operation of these sources. And similarly with water quality, we have a good record of water quality. Some infrastructure is required um, and uh, sorry, some infrastructure is in place. Uh, we have, uh, for example, well houses, but there are upgrade re upgrades required, and that's primarily around treatment requirements for, for these sources that are offline. Uh, past operation uh, demonstrates low environmental impacts, but there is some additional study required uh, to investigate this. For example, I mentioned that um, bringing the lower road collector online would require a major reconstruction of the of the feature, and um, and and the uh, potential impacts associated with it, with it would have to be assessed. Um, next, uh, we note the risk of contaminate contaminant movement, and this is specific to the Sacco and Smallfield wells, um, where there's there's known contamination in the aquifer, and it's not being remediated. Um, we've had conversations with the MECP as part of this project. And the outcome of that was that um, they, they feel that um, cleanup of that contamination before 2051 is unlikely. So the future use of these wells is uncertain. Um, in terms of costs for these, uh, these alternatives, um, the, they're low to high costs relative to the other, the other alternatives. So the outcome is that it's part of the preferred solution to, to bring, uh, to re restore the offline wells. And it is a high priority. Um, however, it will be limited at this time to the Clyth well and the lower road collector um, due to the uncertainty around the contamination 
uh, near the, uh, the small field and Sackle wells. The total capacity uh, for these sources is 6,000 cubic meters per day. So next we have the municipal test wells. Um, with, with the test wells, and there are six of them, we have moderate to high certainty of the available uh, water volume and water quality. And this is uh, based on field testing that's, that's been completed. Now, the exception is the, the Hauser well. And this is related to the fact that it, it is near to, to the Sacco and small field wells where there's uh, known contamination. So there'd be some work uh, required to assess the, the specific water quality in the area of the Hauser well. <clears throat> Uh, there'd be new infrastructure required for these these locations we have we have test wells but that's the limit of the the infrastructure in place uh, where wells are near surface water and wetlands we require a field field assessment of potential interaction with these features these wells would require new wellhead protection areas and there are potential land use restrictions associated with that um, in the case of the logan and fleming wells these are on city-owned land in guelph hermosa township so there'd be consultation and, and cooperation that's required uh, with the township to develop these sources. And under cost, we generally have uh, low costs for these alternatives uh, with the exception of the, the Hauser well uh, due to the, the low expected volume associated with this as well. So the outcome of this alternative is that it's part of the preferred solution and it is a high priority as the cities are within the, uh, the sources are within the city or on city owned land. And the total anticipated capacity for these sources is about 9,000 cubic meters per day. So next is the, the Dolan Quarry site. And there's high certainty of the available uh, water volume for, for this source. And that's due to, we have uh, the detailed dewatering records within the quarry. So we're aware of how much groundwater is being extracted from the quarry. And also there's been modeling completed um, for the um, uh, for this this source, um, the uh, the availability of water through surrounding wells or directly from the quarry would need to be assessed through the Southwest Guelph Water uh, Southwest Guelph Class EA, and and so what this bullet is is speaking to is um, the fact that uh, there there's two two possibilities here for for developing. Uh, the, the additional water available from from the Lime quarry and that's to, to capture um, the groundwater uh, from the surrounding wells or potentially take it directly from the quarry and so that's going to going to be the the focus of uh, the southwest guelph ea which is assessing how much additional water is available in this part of the city and it's going to include a, a detailed uh, operational testing program uh, which is essentially a, a field program to to investigate the amount of water available and the potential associated impacts. Um, there's low anticipated risk to the natural environment associated with this. Um, we, we have um, good, good uh, a long-term record of, of uh, uh, the quarry being dewatered and an understanding of, of the associated um, potential impacts. And again, this will be assessed in, in more detail under the Class EA that's underway. Um, new source water protection <clears throat> designation will be re required for, for this source. So there's potential land use restrictions associated with that. Um, in terms of the jurisdiction of this one, um, it is, as I mentioned, on the boundary of the city, um, but the city council has approved uh, annexation of the quarry into the city boundary. And this has now moved on to um, the provincial approval step. The cost, um, for this alternative um, is sort of twofold. So there's, um, as I mentioned, there's this work being done to determine the best way to, to access water within this part of the city. Um, and so if this water can be developed uh, through the surrounding wells, um, this is a significantly lower cost than, than uh, taking water directly from the quarry and constructing a water treatment plant to, to, uh, to treat that water. So this will be refined through, through the Class EA process that's underway. So the outcome of this alternative is that uh, this, this is part of, of the preferred solution. Um, it is a, a high priority and it's currently being assessed, as I mentioned, and the total assessed capacity is, is estimated at 3,000 cubic meters per day. I'm just gonna pause for a drink of water briefly.
<clears throat> okay, so the next alternative is the Arkell Aquifer Storage and Recovery option. And so this is an option to capture excess spring flow uh, from the collectors on the Arkell site, um, treat them to potable standards, and store that water within the aquifer to later be extracted when demand is high. Now, I have noted here a uh, low certainty with uh, of available water volume uh, that also noted that the lower road collector requires a reconstruction and an ASR optimization studies required. So what, what this means is, is um, based on the work that we, we did for this alternative, um, we, we looked at uh, certain scenarios for where uh, aquifer storage and recovery wells could be located within this, the city. And the recommendation coming out of that study is that um, a detailed optimization study would be required to further define this alternative and also to optimize the design of the ASR alternative. So, so there's some work to do here. Uh, next is uh, the low anticipated risk to the natural environment. So the lower road collector is, is currently uh, permitted and was operated long term. Um, but one thing to note is, is that, uh, as I said on a previous slide, that this, this, this collector would be reconstructed as, as uh, prior to the, the ASR strategy being implemented. And so the, the associated environmental impacts would, would need to be reassessed as part of that process. In terms of the ASR wells them, themselves, um, they would be um, uh, designed to, to pump a volume that's equal to the injected volume. And, um, and therefore, it's a, a, a net zero uh, taking from, from the aquifer. So you're, you're recovering the water that you're putting in. And so we, we anticipate a, a low risk to the natural environment associated with that. But again, you know, this would um, uh, depend on, on where the wells ended up being, and each one of those would have to be assessed in individually. Um, so for this, a new infrastructure would be required, of course, for rebuilding the collector and in, in, uh, installing ASR wells. And, and, the new, and those wells would require a wellhead protection area. So there's potential land use restrictions associated with that. <clears throat> um, with respect to cost, um, refinement of, of the costs are required through the optimization work that I mentioned. Um, the, the assessed costs are high uh, relative to the, to the modeled supply capacity, but we do, we do feel that through optimization, there'd be an ability to uh, develop additional capacity with, with this uh, alternative and therefore uh, modify the, those costs. <clears throat> so the outcome of this alternative is that it's part of the preferred solution, um, but it is uh, more of a moderate priority as, as there are uh, significant work that's, that's required uh, to, as part of project implementation for this one. Um, and the noted capacity for these sources is, is 1200 cubic meters per day, but we do anticipate that this could be increased through an optimization process. Okay, so finally under groundwater, uh, we have new wells outside of the city. So I mentioned uh, two locations, one north of the city and one in the Southeast. So under key evaluation considerations, um, there's, there's moderate certainty of available water volume. Um, and, and that's due to the fact that there is somewhat limited site specific information. So we don't have actual test wells here. So there, there's a significant field work required to, to, ass to assess the resource. Uh, where, uh, if, if wells are situated uh, near surface water and wetlands, this will require field assessment to um, evaluate the potential interaction with the surface water. Of course, new infrastructure would be required. As I mentioned, there, there are, are not any test wells in these locations now. And uh, with wells being established in these areas, new well wellhead protection areas would be required, and that comes with potential land use restrictions. <clears throat> so um, in terms of jurisdiction, as I mentioned, these are outside of the city. So uh, within both uh, Guelph, Aramosa and Pushland townships. And so there's a, a collaboration and coordination required with the, the townships to as part of developing these alternatives. The estimated associated costs are moderate to high relative to the other supply capacities, uh, apply, uh, supply alternatives, I should say. So the outcome of this alternative is that it's part of the preferred solution, but it is a lower priority as the sources are located outside of the city. The total evaluated capacity for these two sources uh, is, a, is a combined uh, 4,500 cubic meters per day. 
So this graph uh, has quite a bit of detail on it, but I'll, um, I'll walk you through it here. What, what it's showing is um, all of the groundwater alternatives um, added onto the existing system capacity. So we had that value of about 79,000. Uh, and then all of the alternatives that I've described on the previous slides uh, added onto that value. So with all of these sources implemented, we, we see that there's sufficient capacity to about uh, 2049. Um, but that said, I've highlighted, I've highlighted some challenges associated with these sources and the likelihood that the SACO and small field wells will not be brought back online by 2051. So something to keep in mind as we look at the uh, surface water alternatives next. Okay, so with surface water, uh, first we looked at um, establishing a, um, an intake at, in, in Guelph Lake and construction of a new water treatment plant uh, to treat that water and send it through distribution to the city. <clears throat> in terms of the key considerations, um, there's a high certainty of the available water volume I mentioned the, the modeling work that uh, GRCA did for this project, um, which included long-term data records from 1951 to 2019. This would be a relatively complex system to operate relative to the, um, the, the groundwater supply systems that are currently in place. Um, a detailed assessment of potential impacts to both um, the natural environment and the recreational use of Guelph Lake would be required. Of course, a significant new infrastructure would be requ required and an intake protection zone would have to be um, uh, uh, defined for, for Guelph Lake and, the, and there's potential land use restrictions associated with that. This location is um, outside of the city. Guelph Lake's located north of the city in Guelph Hermosa Township. In terms of costs, um, there's moderate to high costs associated with this relative to the other alternatives. So the outcome is that this alternative is, is part of the preferred solution, but is a, lo a low priority alternative uh, as, as Guelph Lake is outside of the city. The total capacity um, evaluated for, for this source is estimated to be 13,000 cubic meters per day. Uh, so next we have um, Guelph Lake with aquifer storage and recovery. So this is the alternative where um, the treatment plant would be expanded to capture additional flows that are available from the lake in uh, uh, the fall, winter, and spring, um, treating that excess water to potable standards and storing it underground uh, through an ASR strategy until uh, demands are increased and that water is required upon which it would be recovered and sent to distribution. Um, so the, the key evaluation criteria is similar to the last slide as this is a, another Guelph Lake source, um, but um, I'll make a few points related to the ASR strategy. Um, uh, and one, one thing related to that would be that uh, uh, similar to the Arkell Spring site uh, in our optimization study would be required to determine the optimal locations within the city um, for, uh, for uh, injection wells. Uh, we anticipate that, that low environmental impacts would be, uh, would, be, would be related to this alternative, but this would be assessed through future field studies. Uh, in terms of source water protection, uh, we would require wellhead protection areas for the ASR wells, and there would be associated land use restrictions. The, the ASR wells in this case uh, would be uh, within the city, and then of course the water would be obtained from Guelph Lake outside of the city, and the costs associated with this alternative are moderate to high relative to the other alternatives. So the outcome here again is that this, this alternative is uh, part of the the preliminary preferred solution, but is a low priority due to its location uh, outside of the city. And the, the total capacity for this source is up to an additional 13,000 cubic meters per day. So it would mean doubling the size of, of the water treatment plant. Okay, so this gra graph shows the capacity of the surface water alternatives. And, and one thing I wanted to note on this, on this graph is uh, the purple line, which is, is the uh, the ASR uh, alternative. And so what we're showing here is, is a conservative capacity value um, that we feel would be increased through the required optimization study. And so with uh, a 100% efficient ASR system, 
uh, the total capacity for just the surface water sources would be would be near the 2051 demand um, of about 105,000 cubic meters per day. So the last alternative is the limit growth or, or do nothing. Um, as noted previously, th this alternative would not add capacity um, and does not meet the challenge and opportunity statement of the EA. Um, in terms of natural environment, it, it would limit the potential for impacts to the natural environment because essentially the um, existing system capacity would remain as is with no additional uh, water pumping from, from the aquifer or from, from surface water. It would have a high impact to meeting growth targets um, because the city would not have enough water to grow. Um, there'd be mixed public acceptance anticipated. So we've noted that, um, you know, uh, that, you know, with respect to, to those who, who feel that the, the city should grow, that, uh, you know, it, it could be a, a negative. And then there are some folks who are happy with the size of the, the city currently, or uh, don't want it to grow to the, the total planned growth um, uh, from the province in 2051. So we, we, we feel that there, there may be some mixed um, acceptance associated with this alternative. Um, and with that limited ability uh, to grow within the city, um, it, we have noted that it could drive a growth to, to the townships. So that's, that's uh, related to the jurisdictional um, category. So overall, um, because this does not meet the uh, objective of the environmental assessment, it's not part of the preferred solution. Okay, so um, a lot of lines, a lot of color on this, this graph, um, but um, I just wanted to point out a few things. So what this is showing is all of the alternatives. So all of the groundwater and surface water alternatives, as well as um, the conservation and efficiency lines all overlaid on, on top of one another. And so um, what I wanted to point out is, is that with all of the alternatives shown like this, um, uh, added on to the existing, existing system capacity, we see that the, the anticipated total system capacity is beyond um, what is required for 2051 demands. However, as I mentioned earlier, we have recommended that most of these alternatives be included in the preferred solution. And, and the reason for this is the uncertainty associated with implementing projects in the field. We, we can expect that, that some of these sources will provide more capacity than, than what's shown here on this, this graph. And some, some will provide less capacity and some may not move forward based on you know, initial field testing or, or other factors that, that come up along the way. So therefore, all, the, all of the projects will be pursued according to their priority. And then the status of each project will be evaluated on a regular basis when the city updates the master plan. So that's, the, that, that's sort of the concept of, of the overall strategy here. And this, this slide uh, further um, indicates um, what we recommended here for the pr preliminary preferred solution, including a, an initial implementation timeline. So we have it broken up into the short term, medium term, and long term. And we can see that in the case of conservation and efficiency, um, as we mentioned, there's, there's three scenarios that have been brought forward to the, to the preferred solution. And so in the short term, that would be continuing with the current level of effort in the, media, in the medium term, um, focusing on uh, high demand customers as the city becomes more efficient and then long term um, implementing water reuse. Um, the groundwater sources that, that are shown in this, this um, implementation timeline uh, are, priori are prioritized, <clears throat> excuse me, um, according to whether they're within the city or on city owned land or outside of the city. So we have um, the sources that are, are within the city or on city owned land uh, in the short term and medium term. And then sources uh, like, for example, the Guelph North and Guelph Southeast well uh, later in the timeline in that 20 to 30 year period. Uh, and then surface water similarly uh, is, is in that, that long term timeline. Um, finally, I wanted to point out, uh, talked a bit about uh, some of the concerns uh, and issues around the small field and SACO wells, which are on, off offline due to contamination within the aquifer. And, and there is um, uncertainty as to whether they could be implemented within the 30 year timeline based on the available information 
and feedback that we've received from the ministry environment. So we're showing that as falling outside of, of the, the timeline uh, greater than 30 years. So that brings me to the, the last slide for tonight. Um, next steps. So um, we'll open this up to, to questions uh, after I, I wrap up this slide. Um, we've, we've, uh, we've received a, a lot of public feedback along the way, hoping to hear some more tonight. And so we'll take, take that uh, information and incorporate it into the, the master plan document that I mentioned we're working on this, this fall. So that's the updated document that we're working on. <clears throat> um, also, there's a, an online survey that, uh, that folks can respond to, and we'll consider that, that information as well. <clears throat> I mentioned earlier there's, there will be further communications with the uh, First Nations communities, um, including a, a virtual meeting in October and uh, and review of the, the draft report, report by the uh, Six Nations community. Um, as part of the water supply master plan update, uh, we'll develop an implementation plan that will be in, incorporated into that document. Um, the, the plan once approved in, in draft by the project team uh, will be presented to, uh, to council for their consideration. Um, the master plan document will then be um, posted for, uh, for public review and comment. And any comments or, or concerns from the public review will be incorporated into the, the final uh, master plan and implementation strategy. Finally, the city will move forward with the, the preferred strategy. And, uh, and, and as I mentioned, um, there's, there's plenty of work uh, ongoing and, and just uh, recently the Southwest Guelph Water Supply EA was kicked off. So we, we encourage um, uh, folks to, uh, to read up on that. It's, there's a website for that. And, um, uh, and, and we'll, uh, we hope that people uh, will, will show an interest and, and provide some, some feedback on that project as well. So that takes us to the question and answer segment. Well, Matt, we currently don't have any questions in the or comments in the chat, but okay. please, so please feel free if you do have any questions or comments to um, just uh, use the raise hand feature. We'll um, we'll welcome you to to ask your questions, provide your comments, or feel free to add them to the chat as well. All right, it looks like Hugh has a question or a comment, so Hugh, go ahead. The Clyth Well is located right beside Clyth Creek, and Clyth Creek has uh, already a critical low flow uh, difficulty that affects the fishery. There has, to my knowledge, been no uh, assessment of uh, continued pumping from the Clyth Well uh, having an effect on the Clyth Creek base flow. Is there a plan to do an actual on-site investigation of the impact of Clythewell pumping on Clyth Creek before it's introduced into the supply system? Yeah, so thanks for the question, Hugh. Um, so there is there is a, a plan to do additional testing associated with uh, the Clyth well, and it, it is a requirement of the, the current permit to take water. Um, uh, Dave, I don't know if you want to comment on any of the specifics of that, um, but I know there is planned testing for that location. Yeah, Matt, I, I was just going to say the same thing. It is an existing well um, that was previously online um, and, uh, you know, has has had a permit since I believe the, the mid the mid 80s um, um, that and, and the project itself did go through a class environmental assessment. And we are proceeding with the uh, um, construction of the treatment system for that well. Um, the permit to take water does require some uh, monitoring, both of domestic wells and the impact on the creek as part of the permit to take water and the monitoring program associated with the permit. Great, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Hugh, go ahead. Hugh, 
you do, uh, you're muted. If you are um, wanting to ask a question, just please unmute. I was careful <laughs> to mute and forgot. <laughs> the um, water taking at Doe Lime is said to have uh, no requirement in meeting the water treatment plant downstream water quality requirements. Is that assessment based on water quality modeling that's been done with the reduced groundwater flows entering the speed upstream of the wastewater treatment plant discharge and with increased wastewater plant discharges, i.e. future modeling that would take into account water taking at Doe Lime and the effect on the water treatment plant outflow. Uh, sorry, Hugh, just one point of clarification. Um, are you referring to the requirements of the quarry operators and, and their, their discharge permit? No, I'm. Uh, the comment was made that using the Doe Lime supply as a, an additional water source restricts the outflow into the Speed River of right. very high quality water. And the comment was that that wouldn't influence the requirement that the wastewater treatment plant has for water quality in the speed downstream of its discharge point. Mm -hmm. um, right. The, okay. there, there is an assimilative capacity study that is being completed um, as part of the wastewater and biosolids master plan. Um, it's in its final stages of completion. Um, our understanding is that the dough lime discharge has not been used in those assimilative capacity studies because it is granted by permit, uh, could end at any time when the quarry um, stopped, stopped operating. Um, that discharge would end and therefore was not considered. Uh, the, it's my understanding the assimilative capacity takes into consideration the upstream water quality, and that's what's used to determine uh, the assimilative capacity from the wastewater, not the downstream. You know, it is recognized that while it was occurring, it does have a benefit, you know, because it is uh, perhaps colder than, you know, it is a groundwater source and does have some benefit. Uh, but it was never considered because it wasn't considered to be a long term permanent discharge into the river. Matt, while we're waiting for other questions or comments, why don't you bring up the next slide and then that way we have it on screen. Um, I know there's a lot of information tonight presented, so um, you do have an opportunity yeah. um, to uh, provide comments and questions, of course, after after tonight, once you've had a chance to absorb this. Um, so we'll just leave this information up here um, while we uh, go through this Q&A period for a bit. Any other questions or comments from from anyone? You, you must have a few more questions out there. <laughs> yes, I have another question. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Darren, I now I've invited questions. <laughs> In 2001, the average daily pumping was 55,616 meters cubed per day. Uh, now that included the lower ARCO uh, contribution, which is now closed, but didn't include several wells that are now open. So in 2001, the system adequately produced 55,600 meters cubed per day. My observation of the predicted demand is that all except the top prediction with no added conservation was below 55,600 in 2051. Is that correct? You, are you talking about the demand in 2001? So what the city was pumping to meet the demand? 
That was what the, the city tennis. pumped. Okay. Okay, that would have been the demand at the time. And it has been, re uh, the per capita consumption has been reduced significantly through the conservation programs. And our average daily rate is now around 47,000. I think when we completed the, uh, um, um, some of our water budget work, it was down around 42,000 uh, cubic meters per day on average. Um, so it is creeping back up as the city continues to grow, but you're right, it's significantly less than uh, um, the demand that we had back in the, in the 2000s. Um, our water supply capacity um, is a little bit higher than what it was back then. Uh, we've added in article uh, 14 and 15, um, um, and that increased our water supply capacity. Um, back in the late 1990s and the early 2000s, we did have some maximum day demands, if I remember correctly, that were up around the um, um, 65,000, at least in the 60,000 somewhere. You know, so the system has in the past produced a lot more water than it is now. Um, we've never operated the system with all of our wells running at 100% capacity. We'd have no place to put the water, quite frankly. So when we do these calculations of that 79,000 as what we um, um, say is our existing capacity, um, I always like to describe it as um, all of our treatment operators outstanding at every wellhead, at, at every wellhead, um, tweaking every every valve to get the absolute maximum out of that system. Um, it may not be sustainable over a long term, you know, over years and decades, you know, but certainly in the short term, the system is likely to be able to produce that amount of water. Does that help? Yeah, I was just pointing out that the demand that you're projecting for 2051 happens to coincide with what the city actually produced in 2001, so over 50 years, there has been enough conservation to uh, keep the city well supplied with water without huge demands for increased supply. Yes, yes, and thank God for that. <laughs> um, you know, quite, quite frankly, it has saved us millions of dollars. You know, the money spent on the conservation programs um, has has saved us a lot of water, uh, saved us from having to build uh, more infrastructure, you know, and we want to continue um, uh, pushing those conservation programs, but we're starting to recognize that they're down pretty low and uh, getting uh, more reductions out of that um, is going to be difficult as we go forward. Yeah, and I just I just pulled up the the projections here just uh, as a refresher. So, um, so we so for twenty fifty one it was about sixty eight thousand for the average day demand, um, and I believe it's ninety one thousand for the maximum day demand. Hey Matt, do you mind going back to um, to the uh, contact slide? Thank you. This is this the right one? Yeah, that's right. Yep. All right. All right. Are there any other other questions or comments up there? All right. I'm not hearing anything. Um, so Matt and Dave, um, I'm not. Uh, I think maybe. You've this is the time to, to wrap up if there's no further questions or comments. Um, I will just walk you through the, the options. So um, as I mentioned before, um, there are, uh, obviously you can reach out after after this meeting if you need some time to di digest the, the information. Um, there are two, three ways. So we do have um, haveyoursay.wealth.ca 
is the city's engagement website and um, there is information about the water supply master plan update there. There's also a, a, a survey or feedback form um, that we encourage you to uh, fill out. It, it does ask for your feedback about the about the different um, water supply alternatives and the evaluation itself. Um, so we'll be uh, keeping that survey open until October 13th. Uh, you can also um, submit questions through that platform to the project team and, and they will be uh, responded to. Uh, the water, the, the guelph.ca slash WSMP is the project website where there will be um, updates to uh, the, the project as we go. And uh, you can also join the mailing list for, um, for information, uh, for more information as the project progresses to its completion. Of course, you can also contact Dave or Matt uh, by email or phone. Their contact information is, is listed on the, the, the presentation that you are hopefully seeing. Um, the in, it's also on the notice, so uh, you probably would have seen that, and that's how you register for this meeting. So please do feel free to reach out to uh, Dave or Matt with any specific questions or comments you might have. Um, I think I think those are all the ways that that you can participate after tonight. Um, yes, um, Alicia, yes, go ahead, Dave. Um, will this you've recorded this presentation? You said this would be posted, and it'll also be available with the with the the slides. Um, so if there are other people out there that want to see it, it will be available. If you want to review this again and. Uh, have another look and if you think of more questions by all means send them along. Yes, um, please do and I think that uh, it might take a day or two for this uh, uh, recording to get processed so uh, please check back again uh, over the weekend or early next week for that and if you go into the the chat box uh, Tracy has posted a link to the have your uh, say wealth.ca uh, the page for the water supply master plan. So um, you can click on that link right away if you want to be taken to the uh, survey. From here, it's up and ready to go. So uh, thank you very much for attending this evening. Uh, Dave or Matt, do you have any any final words before we wrap up? Um, just, well, I, thank I, you I, very I, much. Oh, sorry, Matt. Go ahead. <laughs> We're, we're dueling with our thank yous here. I, I was just going to say the same, same thing. <laughs> thanks, yeah. to, thanks to the folks who, who were able to take time out of their evening tonight to uh, to listen to us talk about our project and, and the future of, of water supply in the city. And we appreciate any information or feedback that you can provide to us. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a wonderful thank, evening. Thank you very much. This has been really helpful. I appreciate it so much. Oh, you're Thank welcome. You. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Have a great evening, everyone. Good night. Bye. 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 -bye.